we would like you ladies and gentlemen to see something that we call the telethon years. Please look to the screen and listen carefully. Jerry asked me to talk to you all about my life uh, since childhood with muscular dystrophy. He did this because there are very few adults who have managed to get through childhood with muscular dystrophy. When MD starts to destroy your muscles, as a child it begins so slowly at first you really don't know what's happening to you. But in a matter of a few months it gets worse at an increasing rate. In my case, I was okay in walking when I was five years old, but then I started to trip on cracks and sidewalks and little things, and then soon nothing seemed to work right in my arms or legs, and in three short years, I was in a wheelchair. But that's only the beginning. Muscular dystrophy never fails to get worse each month. You know, it's terrifying for any child to suddenly lose its health and be faced with a relentless, nightmarish attack on every muscle in your body, you become terribly frustrated and, and, and you want to give up. Uh, you know, you, you just don't know what you want to do next. It's sort of hard to sit here and talk to you about your feelings, but you realize as you grow older, the love and dedication and the sacrifice that your parents and your wife and family make to keep you going. I know, looking at my own parents in the past, that it was pure agony to watch their child wasting away in front of them. And that's true of every parent. I guess the difference today for the muscular dystrophy child is that they have Jerry Lewis to look to. I do a lot of traveling for United Airlines and I meet a lot of these kids. And I can tell you, he, he's like a god to them. And they know he's fighting to help and he won't turn his back on them. And that's giving them the hope to keep on fighting. You know, courage is born from hope and hope is probably one of the noblest of human spirits. A child in a wheelchair fighting muscular dystrophy to have that spirit must have his own dreams for the future. That courage for these children must be respected, ladies and gentlemen, and those hopes must be achieved, not for me, but for those children. My job really is to go through all of these painful memories and, and try to get you committed to erase this disease. You know, I've sat here for 10 years and talked about the subjective problems of a child going through this disease. Now I'm an adult and I've managed to put the pieces together and, and build a life, which the others never had a chance to do. And you know, kids are the joy of your life and our firstborn was a son, Rob. And he got married and had his first child was coming. Just before the telethon, the baby was born, and it had Wernicke-Hoffman disease. The baby was born and went right into a respirator. It was paralyzed from the neck down. Little Katie, beautiful little redhead. And the doctor said this wouldn't last more than a week. She'd get pneumonia and pass on. They all did. And she, she died shortly thereafter. And then I had to come out here and do my job for Jerry. And and as I told you last night, this is the first telethon I've done without Scotty Swift, who was the first poster child 10 years ago when they started this. And he died this spring. And I know that he and Katie are together in a place where there's no wheelchairs and no respirators. And you know, with your help, we can make this world that kind of place. God bless you all. Thank you. the telethon years we call them the telethon years because I asked this friend of mine to stand sit lean any possible way get on that stage and bear your soul help me nobody knows better than Bob Sampson what this dread disease is like there wasn't anything that I asked him to do that he did not do knowing full well I knew in my heart he did it each time under duress. 
to talk about the loss of his grandchild was the coup de grace. There was nothing after that. I asked him, please come to the telethon this year, and that I would not impose on his emotions or to ask him to hurt anymore. But I would like you to join me in thanking a great, fantastic friend who has given me the inspiration to fight. Bob Sampson. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.